The best beer store in the West, with two stores at Shop, at two, shop 2, 13 and Delhi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Alterna. Hophead's offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hopheads AU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Welcome to a dawning of a new era. It is going to be the start of the Hopheads Football IQ Quiz. And man, is it going to be one hell of a competition. Coronavirus might be um, taking its toll and not allowing us to be playing any football at the moment. But uh, here at the, um, the Football Fan Zone, we're going to be delivering you a football competition of a difference. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all. I'm joined by Craig Filer and I'm also joined by Steve Curtin. What a rip snorting um, lineup we have got, gentlemen. Welcome. Good evening. How are we both? Very, very excited. Very, well. very, well. very excited. And yourself? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Looking forward to, uh, to to kicking this off. I'm sure we'll have some demons um, in in the background, but uh, hopefully we'll um, we can iron them out pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Something different. I'm saying to somebody this afternoon. You know, it's a it's an opportunity for us for the football world to uh, to get together. I um, mean, what has been a difficult time for everybody, and obviously the this afternoon's news that it's been extended another four weeks. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's been extended. Well, it's been extended to the 13th of September, which was the original date, but they've just basically said that it's uh, it's going to be extended for another yeah. four weeks. So. Well, well, gentlemen, let me just say, all day today, I've been so, so busy with um, oh, a million and one other things. I was uh, watching the UFC midway through the afternoon. I was playing with the kids. I went for a jog, actually went for a jog around the lake. I had no idea what was happening in the outside world. And let me tell you, it was probably the happiest day <laughs> in the last six months. I had an absolute ball and indeed getting ready for tonight. So, so uh, you know, we're going to be here taking some of the, 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 the trials and tribulations of everyday life and we're going to make it an exciting competition because tonight the Hopheads Football IQ Quiz, Steve kicks off. And we've got Sebastopol Vikings versus Williamstown Soccer Club. What can we expect from these two combatants tonight? Oh, well, we've got to see these two as rivals. You look at it on paper, they're both State League Three clubs. They compete against each other regularly, and they're going to compete against each other tonight on the big stage. Um, forget the Champions League. There's a lot of talk about that. But the real talk around Victoria is about these two clubs, Sebastopol Vikings and Williamstown, going head-to-head -head tonight in the inaugural Hophead Football IQ Quiz. Uh, no one could sleep last night. We're very, very excited. Uh, this is going to be a major event. So if you're tuning in, don't go anywhere. Now, we'll just go through the um, the, the very, very first uh, um, the first four match days. So there we go, gents. Um, match day one tonight. Um, it's Sebastopol Vikings taking on Williamstown. Craig, on um, Thursday, as part of the Football Outlet show, a team very, very close to you in the sense um, geographically and also a team very, very close to you in the sense of um, professionally speaking, do battle against each other. Hoppers Crossing and North Geelong Warriors, what can we expect? Yeah, well, we don't know what to expect on that one because as last week as we were making the draw, um, the... Uh, the uh, uh, com competitor, I suppose, for Hopper's Cross and pulled a hamstring, I think, uh, whilst the draw was being made. So we, don't, <laughs> we don't know whether Kev Smart's actually um, um, big enough and got the balls enough to come on screen next week and uh, and uh, do com uh, be competitive for Hopper's Crossing up against uh, Anthony Banovac, who's going to be taking up the mantle for, for North Geelong Warriors. And he's a wily old fox, young, young in age, but wily in his character, mate. So that'll be a great... Uh, uh, was it State League one against uh, MPL two uh, yeah. time last week? So that'll be uh, another great, uh, another great tie. Benavides he calls himself he's a self-proclaimed nerd. Are we allowed to say that in this day and age? But <laughs> he's going to be swapping his boots for the books, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Match day three next Sunday, Steve St Albans Saints versus Meadow Park. Yeah, that's right, and that. Fixture, if I'm correct, from our draw last week is an NPL one side versus State League five side. So, look, um, in terms of league standings, David versus Goliath. Let's see how that one goes. Looking forward to that one very much. Yeah. And that one followed up by 
the following Thursday, Collingwood City, our furthest east base club in this competition against the might of the of the uh, the West there, Brimac Stallions. Yeah, should be should be interesting. That's on Thursday, the twenty seventh of August, and then um, taking us through from um, the first week of um, well, the last week of um, August through to to mid September, just before just before the uh, the uh, restrictions are supposed to be lifted. Craig, match day five, Barwon and George Cross. Yeah, another David and Goliath Barwon from State League Five taking on uh, the former um, giants of. of uh, of Victorian football and still uh, one of the biggest clubs in Victorian football, although playing in State League One, but uh, not for very much longer. I, I doubt in uh, in George Cross Football Club. So another uh, another big tie there. And Steve, the big one, the big Croatian derby. <laughs> there's already there has already been a lot of um, uh, um b b beneath the belt comments being made on on um social media between the, these two combatants. Um, Thursday, 3rd of September, promises to be a massive affair when the Melbourne Knights take on Gosford Bears. That's right. Forget the rivalries between, say, the old NSL rivals of the Knights and Sydney United. It's all about the Knights and the Bears on Thursday, the 3rd of September. And the banter for that one is reaching world-class levels. And it's only going to intensify as we get closer to that big match. And I can't wait for that one. Yeah, Altona Magic then taking on Yarraville Glory on Sunday, the 6th of September in the penultimate match day of the opening round, Craig. Altona versus Yarraville Glory. Yeah, local derby. Um, that's uh, they're only a few a few kilometres for one another. You can probably see I've got the Altona Magic shirt in the background here, which is, uh, which is my daughter's shirt. And um, um, I think um, Graham Moran, who's the senior ladies coach, will be... Uh, competing for Altona Magic, while the senior head coach for Yarraville, Gary, uh, Yarraville Glory, sorry, Paul Donnelly will take up the mantle for uh, for Yarraville. So, again, another uh, another really good tussle there. And last but not least, Thursday the 10th of September, we've got Carayo all the way down from Geelong, and they'll be represented by Joe Giacomazzo, who seems to know everyone and everything in Victorian football. He'll be taking on Sunbury United, or should I say Corio will be taking on Sunbury United, Steve? Yeah, that's right. Two clubs. Corio, one that we featured heavily on the Geelong Region Soccer Show as a feature club, and Sunbury United, who we've also enjoyed chatting to on the Football at West program uh, last season at uh, FNR Studios in Docklands. Um, and I'm hearing Joey, he's feeling very confident for this one, and he's talking himself up for a, perhaps a, a uh, successful mission through to the next round. Yeah, exactly. Now we've got a comment, and I'm going to address this comment because it's certainly worth addressing. Um, Omar Bradford says, um, Collingwood, Western Suburbs, how is that possible? Well, it wasn't open just to the Western Suburbs clubs. It wasn't open just to Melbourne clubs. It was open to whoever wanted to, to be a part of it. And, um, Craig, we had um, – you, you, you were the main the coordinator, so to speak, but you had a lot, a lot of um, um, interest in the um, – um, as far as the um, the teams that wanted to play, yeah, we had 22, 22 um, originally. Uh, that was up until uh, last Saturday, I think it was. Uh, we had twenty two, and we've had another four this week that have put their um, uh, hat in the ring for, for for the next round of matches. So um, you know, I'm sure over the next uh, few weeks, as people see what we're trying to do, that more and more people will come on. And the idea is that, as you said last week, Tonch, you know, there's a possibility we could have a second division. <laughs> the golden generation will be very, very happy about that. Actually, maybe Pro rail for our quiz. <laughs> maybe the golden generation could enter a team as well. Um, we are having a little bit of feedback issues. I'm not too sure, Craig. It seems to be coming from your microphone. Um, that's better. Whatever you did there. That better goes, yeah. That's much good. better. Yeah, yeah, much better. Um, yeah, we, we we could have a two division, two tier division competition next year. So, but but clubs out there. First in, best dressed. We had some big clubs that were umming and eyeing, hesitating and this and that. And guess what? They got spanked because in the end they missed out. But uh, to all those 16 clubs that are part of this, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, no, it should be absolutely, absolutely awesome. Cannot wait. Now, gents, I'm going to withdraw um, for stop. the time being. Just stop you there, Tonch. Mark Sultana, yes, there will be promotion and relegation. <laughs> so yeah, bottom we will have promotion and relegation. And Miles, 
if uh, if you want to represent Lilo, get your names in, get me an e- get your email sent over from the club, mate, and we'll put you in the hat for the uh, for the next round of draw. For the next one, absolutely. It's free, by the way, to uh, to 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 um to to be involved. But a big big shout out, Craig, to our sponsor tonight, Hopheads in um Port, um in Point Cook and Altona. Um, man, they are offering a great prize. Um, to all of the contestants um, comp- competing, or well, the winners of all the weeks competing. So, but you tell us what's involved, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big thanks to Adrian Chong from uh, from uh, Hopheads, um, who we uh, we spoke to last week, and he's uh, he's been kind enough to to offer up uh, seven hundred dollars worth of prizes over the course of the um, over the course of the uh, the um, the quiz. So each winner each week will get a fifty dollar uh, Hopheads via voucher. Uh, which they can use it uh, whenever they uh, whenever they choose. Now, if they happen to get through to the final, they're effectively going to get four rounds of fifty dollars, which is it's, it's two hundred dollars worth of vouchers to spend. So, big big shout out to Adrian and the boys and the and the girls at uh, at Top Heads. Um, thanks for the support on this. Really appreciate it, and and uh, hopefully um, this will this will drum up some business for you as well. Support yeah, you know. support your local. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, don't don't go away. Stay with us. That 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 kickoff of that big 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 quiz, the game one between Sebastopol Vikings and Williamstown. Well, that'll kick off in a roughly around about oh, 17, 18 minutes. Um, don't go away. Straight after the, the the boys have stepped away for the time being, but um, they're going to be involved in the news desk. Lots to talk about. Do stay with us. It's the football fan zone. You're tuning into. Don't go away. The best beer store in the West, with two, with two stores, stores at, at Shop 2, Shop. number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to take myself away and um, I'm going to allow you to continue on with the news desk. Have a good one. Thank you, Tonch. And uh, just so everybody knows, Tonch is still with us. He's in the background doing all the um, all the important stuff in uh, getting everything ready for the quiz. There is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to getting this up and running. We've had a few uh, few uh, dry runs this afternoon, Steve, and uh, we're hoping that, uh, fingers crossed, that that everything works this evening. Yeah, I'm sure everything will work out fine. If we have any teething problems, um, yeah, thanks for the the patience of uh, Michael and Vlad from Sebastopol and Williamstown for bearing with us if anything does go wrong and we'll have it sorted as soon as we can and we'll have a, a winner for tonight. Absolutely. And again, so it's exciting. Yeah, it is. And a big thanks to Hopheads and Adrian for uh, for donating the uh, the prizes. So um, just very quickly then, Steve, should we jump onto the news for this week and have a, have a chat about everything football that's going on? We'll start. Uh, we'll, let's start with uh, with the A League, shall we? Yeah, we can talk about the A League. So, I mean, last night, how good? How good? That's all I can say. How good was that for Western United for the club from our region to play a partly second string side, resting a few players, intense schedule, and get a win over our um, as Victorians probably our most hated club, Sydney FC on their party day when they were planning to lift the Premier's plate uh, with goals from Barisha and Lustitza. It was. One of my, um, I can't stop smiling, actually. What do you think? No, oh, look, I think um, it was fantastic. You know, if, if you're a Western United support, uh, supporter, if you're just a football supporter in general, you know, to have a team in the West, um, brand new to the A-League, uh, you know, 18 months ago, they, they weren't even around. Now they could potentially finish third in their first A-League season is, is some feat. Um, and to go to Sydney last night and see um, see them play, against a full-strength Sydney United side. Okay, they haven't been firing on all cylinders of, of late, certainly since we've come back from uh, from the lockdown. Uh, they haven't been playing to the to the, to the the way that, um, that we're used to Sydney playing, but that still doesn't go from the fact that you've still got to go and play these teams. And um, the squad that Mark Rudan put out last night was a very mixture of, uh, a mixture of old, um, older players, more experienced players than the younger players, and the younger players certainly didn't let the club down last night. I thought they were fantastic. Absolutely right, mate. Um, they managed it very well. And as we were saying, I think before the game last night, the young players that are coming into the team, it's their chance to gain a spot for 
the finals, um, whether that be in the starting 11 or as a fringe substitute. So all of those guys that played last night, they've all put their hand up for a spot in the team in a final series in the club's first year. You'd have to just be so proud. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark Rodan takes a lot of credit for that, Steve. We spoke about it last night on the show that, you know, if we look back, um, I suppose it's almost 12 months, um, you know, when we started and the number of changes that the club have had both on the field um, and, and off the field has been, um, you know, it's been more than most clubs would do in, in, in three or four seasons. So, you know, they had a lot of injuries go, going on. They had to bring more players in. You know, we spoke to um, uh, Brendan Hamill last night, who's been out for the season since when he'd done his knee up at, uh, up at um, Ballarat. Yep. Uh, and we spoke to him last night, but you know you have to you have to take your hat off to Mark Rudan and, and and what he's done, and you know even speaking to Brendan last night, this whole five weeks of being in a bubble in Sydney, I think has done a world of wonder for that football club. It definitely has. Um, being that close together in close quarters, twenty four seven, there's a lot that could go wrong. In West United's case, everything's going right at the moment. The camaraderie in that group of players and staff is something that any team would envy. At the moment, yeah. yeah. Play them at the moment, Steve. No chance. <laughs> what do we say? Six out of seven wins in um in the last yeah six from the last seven. Yeah. That is some form. There wouldn't be too many yeah too many um A League sides that have conquered that many victories in that uh, that amount of uh, time. Apart from some of the really good teams in the in the history of the competition. Yeah, no, it's uh, and and look, they play Wednesday night. They play Melbourne City. Mm. Um, who were without uh, Craig Noon, the talisman, um, who's been playing really, really well for them. He obviously got sent off last week, um, so they'll be without him. So, you know, the answer, the answer I suppose the, the question is, can they beat Melbourne City on Wednesday night and can mm. they gain that third spot? In this, uh, what they've shown us, they definitely can and West United should be bringing some more experience back into the starting eleven. Um, we'll have to see what happens, but if they do win, they can move up into yeah third place um, and it will just help them in their draw for the finals. Obviously, it won't get them a double chance, but it could get them an easier fixture. I think that would get them a game against Perth Glory. Yeah, absolutely. And and not forgetting, Steve, if I'm not mistaken, they do actually then qualify for the, uh, the cha- Champions League as well. I've- I haven't checked that out, actually. That's fascinating. Imagine yeah, first season qualify for the Champions League. Uh, Western- who, Western- yeah, that was certainly not... Yeah, it's like, um, well, I mean, it reminds me of Ranieri when he was Leicester manager that time and he just wanted to avoid relegation at the start and then he wanted to finish top 10 and then he thought he'll maybe make the Europe, uh, Europa League and then next thing he's won the league. It's sort of sort of like that, just setting modest goals and then constantly uh, one-upping yourself and that's what's happening at the moment. Absolutely. Talking... Excuse me. Talking of uh, European football, let's uh, let's switch our attention over to uh, to Europe. And uh, yeah, what what a few nights of football uh, in the in the Champions League, Steve. Yeah. Did you get up early on Saturday morning for the big one? No, I didn't. Me. I actually um, I actually watched it this afternoon of uh, the Barcelona Bayern Munich game. Um, Insane. <laughs> just 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 mental. Just mental. You know the yeah. they've. Three three one within thirty one minutes. Um, mm. Bayern. Yeah, Munich, I, I got up at five, and the first passage of play ended in a Bayern Munich goal. So they've already, you know, they've already scored, and it was just the speed of the movement of the ball was insane. Their their line was so high, which led to them conceding that obviously that own goal. But the trade off was it gave Barcelona's midfield absolutely no time and space on the ball, and they were just basically scared of this Bayern machine that was. Crunching them up, uh, swallowing up and spitting them out. Yeah, and, and, and it's um, just a sort of question, observation, I suppose, Steve, from, from what I saw on the game uh, today was, you know, Barcelona have obviously, they, they've been known for their tiki-taka style of football, you know, with you know Pep Guardiola and we still see that at Manchester City still. Has football changed now? Has that tiki-taki football sort of gone now? Because you look at um, some of the teams around Europe and we talk about Liverpool in their high press. Um, you look at what Bayern Munich did against Barcelona with the high press. Mm. Is that now the new star? Yeah, are teams now going to be the successful teams? Liverpool, you know, have been successful this year by doing it. Is mm. that now the new the, the new tiki taka? Well, it could be. This I don't think there's ever one definitive style to use, but certainly at the moment, teams that are playing with that high press and high line, um, with sort of like a what Liverpool play that four three three sort of system. It seems to be the one with mobile players that are all blessed with a lot of pace and uh, 
good ability to interchange positions with each other, that sort of thing. That seems to be working at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And just what, to, what, what do you reckon? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think a mixture of both is 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 always good. You can't have one style of football and expect that to be you know because people teams you know coaches of uh, are getting more and more clever now they you know, they understand in the game that it's more tactical and, and technical now than than it's ever been so i think mm. to have different styles is very good but i thought you know um you know I, I don't i don't think the bayern munich coach could actually believe i think he was shocked i think he was embarrassed at, at one point i think the camera went on to him and he looked in total disarray to think what the hell is going on here you know it's this 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 isn't happening but it did happen and um you have to take your hats off to them and they look very very dangerous mate and i think you know when you've got people like muller and uh Ledendowski up up front um you know you, you're gonna be a, you're gonna be hard for any team to beat yeah, absolutely right, mate. Um, should we go through the scores in the other games in the Champions League? Absolutely. Crack on. All right. So uh, I think we've been over this on Thursday's show, but Thursday morning it was Atalanta 1, PSG 2. Then a bit of a surprise for me on Friday morning, RB Leipzig 2, Atletico Madrid 1. Mm. And then that, yes, yeah, so that was a surprise. Yeah, it was. I think um, you, you, you put, you'd you almost put your money, wouldn't you, on uh... On, on Atletico Madrid getting to some kind of final, the way they just are, the way he Simeone sets himself up to play. But um, Leipzig, young young side again. Um, is it a case of you know they're going in, they they're the well the underdogs. Have they just gone in with no fear and said, okay, we're just going to have a go? And yeah. have a, they did, and um, they played with no fear and enjoyed their football and and got the result that's that nobody could nobody could qualm about the result. If you if you've watched the highlights, they were the better side by a mile. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. Um, it was interesting, um, Atletico losing uh, Correa and Verasco with uh, coronavirus, isolating at home at least anyway. So I'm not sure of the full story about that, but, yeah, certainly two key players, a fullback and a midfielder missing for Atletico. Would that have made a difference? I don't know. Perhaps RB was still too good either way. Yeah. Um, okay, looking at the other results, a surprise this morning um, with Leon getting over Man City. Uh, three goals to one. Yeah, I haven't. Crazy. Yeah, I haven't seen the game. I've seen the goals, but I haven't seen the game. I'll uh, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, I'll watch it tomorrow. But um, yeah, you have to start. Uh, you start. You start asking questions now with Pep, don't you? Um, you know that's the only trophy he hasn't won. It's the one that they cry Manchester City fans are, are crying out for. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to happen for him again for a, for another season. So, have you? Did you watch the game yourself? I just caught the highlights this morning, and I mean. Yeah, there was some shocking moments for Man City with uh, was it Sterling who spurned that one over the bar yeah. from six yards out with the open net right in front of him. So things could have been a little bit different, but that's the way it went. And uh, Leon was was uh, very 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 good. Uh, Anthony Lopez in goal was was excellent. Made a number of great saves. So um, I think look, Man City supporters shouldn't get too down, but obviously it's going to be pretty frustrating for them at the moment. They they still played some good football in this match. So. In the draw for the sem or the draw for the semi-finals. Yeah. Like so Wednesday morning, 5 a.m. RB Leipzig versus PSG. Who do you like for that one? Yeah, you've you, 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 PSG for me there. Uh, yeah. you know, I think uh, they're very, very strong. Uh, that game, that finish on uh, on Thursday night, was it? Uh, was was on yeah. morning was unbelievable. So yeah, I think uh, PSG for me in that one. And then Leon, of course, going on to face Bayern that match is Thursday morning at five a.m. Yeah, again, you'd have to you'd have to take uh, Bayern on that one. I think so. I think mm. uh, we'll be looking at a, a Bayern Munich PSG final, which will be a, a great final. Some um, some big big players on show there, and uh, that will be uh, that will be a great game. And these are strange times, but I think few would have predicted a semi final lineup without any English, Italian, or Spanish clubs. Just uh, French yeah. and German. Well, you're German, so. Again, we we spoke about it the other week, mate, on on a show about you know how you know different countries go through cycles. You know, Germany in in football terms at national level uh, had have have always been like robots. They've always got to finals until mm. recently, where you know they started to change their football, their their ethos. Um, you know, France have done exactly the same with Claire Fontaine. They set up Claire Fontaine, and then they started getting all the youngsters. And it happens. It happens all the time. If we look at the UK now and England in particular. They're talking about the golden generation again. Uh, every four years, England seem to have a golden generation that never do anything. But it, if football goes around in cycles, Spain will start. You look at Barcelona side, um, as it was of you know, the other day when they played, uh, I think they had eight players over the age of 33 or over the age of 31. 
You know, mm. that's time now for a change at Barcelona. They can't continue to play those players and not have something behind the scenes. Mm. So that'll all change, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, football's a vicious, uh, vicious cycle, and um, you know, teams, teams will, uh, teams will change um, every year, mate. Yeah, interestingly, um, Barcelona's election, which is obviously all the fans, 200,000 members, sorry, get to vote, is still 10 months away. So there's a bit of frustration from Barcelona supporters at the moment that they can't have a say in the running of their club because there's a bit of disappointment at the moment for obvious reasons. Um, obviously yep. not, not doing too well in La Liga this year um, and then the disappointment of a, a dishonourable a, uh, exit from the Champions League. Now, do you want to talk about the uh, Europa League matches that are coming up? Yeah, please do. Let's uh, let's have a chat about that. Okay, so tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., set your alarms. It's Sevilla and Man United, that game, obviously featuring Sevilla. They're, they're, they are perennial threats in this competition. They, they, they are <laughs> almost the heart and soul of the Europa League. And as for Man United, obviously a lot of interest in Australia for the Red Devils. That match will be widely watched all across Australia tomorrow morning. Make no mistake about it. Um, who do you like in that one? Uh... Just uh, Seville, you know Seville of, of um, yeah, like you said, the perennial finalist. They've been, I think, five of the last six or six of the last seven or something. Yeah. Um, I, uh, do you know what, man? I, I I really couldn't care um, who gets the final in that one. Although you know, I'm not a Manchester United fan, but um, you know, I would like to see you know Manchester United, I suppose, get to the final since they've come back from the break. They have looked a different side. Um, hmm. You just said six months ago that. You know, Manchester United will finish fourth in the in the uh, EPL, and they'll be in the semi-finals of the Europa League. And Oli Gunnar Solskjaer will still be in a job. You'd have said mm. not a chance. Hundred <laughs> percent, mate. Yeah. Exactly right. You would have said so. Some things again. Something happened at that club to turn their fortunes around. We spoke about Mark Rudan and and Western United. Some things happened that maybe this whole bubble of getting all the boys in together on a regular basis has done something because he's got them playing football. I think the mm. biggest. The biggest change was bringing in the um, the lad from mm. uh, from from Spain. Uh, That's right. How much credit goes to Bruno Fernandez for like? Has he turned the whole team around single handedly? Uh, I think he has. <laughs> I think he has. They say one player doesn't make a team, but you know it, it. You know, if you bring the right player in, Steve, you know, as as it showed, you know, you had Paul Pogba, who everybody said is the wrong player for that club. Now all of a sudden, you bring somebody in like Bruno Fernandez. Paul Pogba stepped up to the plate and says, okay, actually, do you know what? I want to be part of this now. Um, yeah. And their front three is frightening. Well, front yeah. three is frightening. So, yeah. um, look, I'd like to see, I, th I suppose, if, if you're asking me who I'd like to see in the final, I think I'd like to see Manchester United, just because I think Solskjaer's done a great job in, one, staying in a job, um, and two, you know, getting the boys playing or getting Manchester United playing in the way that they are at the moment. So, Yeah. Um, some good comments coming in. Thank you for all your comments. We can't get through all of them, but thank you. Some of them jumping out to me. Donald Pritchard says Bielsa to Barcelona, question mark. That's an interesting one. Now let's move on to the second uh, semifinal in the Europa League, and it is featuring a player that um, was the front man for Man United, and it's Inter Milan, who have been spearheaded very well by Lukaku. They're coming up in an intriguing or an almost quirky football tie against Shakhtar Donetsk of the Ukraine. So who I like in that one, I'm not too sure. Craig? Yeah, Milan for me, Inter Milan for me. Um, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see them. I, I've had, always had a soft spot for Inter Milan. I know nothing about Shakhtar Donetsk. I know it's in Ukraine, and that's about as much as I know. <laughs> in um, that last match that Shakhtar came through, they had three different Brazilians on the score sheet for the Ukrainians. So that's quite funny. <laughs> how, right. often would, how often would you get that? Three different Brazilians all scoring in the Europa League clash. Very good. Um, so that match is on the following morning. So that will be Tuesday morning. And then by, by Tuesday, it's about 7 a.m. approximately. All things are, assuming we don't go to extra time, we will know the finalists of that Europa League competition, which I think the final will be next next weekend. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Great, uh, great update from you on uh, European football. All right. I suppose we uh, we we get into uh, the main crux of uh, of the scene. Is Tonch back with us? He is. I'm back with you guys. I think our contestants are ready to go. So it's all systems go now. Craig, did you want to give a maybe a little bit of a, a, a procedural run through of how things are going to go through tonight? 
Yeah, I can do, guys. So um, how it's all going to work, guys, is there's going to be um, a set of uh, 10 sets of questions or 10 questions per team. Uh, we're going to do a toss of the coin first to see who has uh, questions one and who has questions two. Um, each question is a multiple choice question of four uh, possible answers. Uh, once the question is, um, so how it's going to work is there will be four players on screen. They all will all come off screen and a question will be put up. That player then has 10 seconds to answer that question. Um, first answer is his final answer. Um, there can be no brains trust, so there's no Google, there's no mates on phones phoning in, there's nobody in the, in the, in the, in the public forum giving, uh, giving their answers away. Uh, and if the scores are tied at the end of, uh, of the 10 questions, uh, we'll continue with a sudden death until somebody fails. And the winner, yeah. as we said, will win a $50 voucher and go through to the quarterfinals, which will be in seven weeks' time. Now, for all you guys playing at home, we do encourage you to play at home. But just remember, we've got a 15-second delay. From the moment that we go to live to the moment that actually comes up on Facebook, it's about a 15-second delay. Um, so if you're going to put the answer in, you know, make sure you take a deep breath, count to about 15, and then that'll give us plenty of time so that our contestants are not being able to be subjected to any undue assistance. <laughs> yeah, no now, assistance and no heckling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we got some heckling might happen. Yeah, we got um, now we got the two gentlemen that are representing the two teams. We'll bring them on very, very shortly. Uh, For Williamstown, it's Vlad Babic, and um, it's for Sebastopol Vikings, it's uh, Michael Bucia, Bucia, I think it is. Um, He's just uh, left actually the green room, so hopefully just gone to quickly get a drink or he's feeling the nerves, but hopefully he'll be back very, very soon. Because we're going to go, uh, we're going to have a, let's have a sponsor's break. And then when we come back, it'll be all systems go, gentlemen. What do you say? Yep, let's do it. Okay. Um, so don't don't go away. You're here tuning into the uh, football fan zone. And it's match day one of the Hopheads football quiz. Don't go away. Sebastopol Vikings versus Williamstown Soccer Club straight after the break. The best beer store in the West, store in the West two stores two. at Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope everybody can hear us, and uh, we're through loud and clear. I know we've had some issues over the past couple of weeks, but um, signal looks to be good in uh, Point Cookistan this evening. So um, hopefully, we can uh, we can get through this uh, with with no problem. So um, you ready, Steve? Yeah, everything going well so far tonight. So fingers Mike. crossed that continues that way. We get through our ten questions each, and look forward to declaring a winner of that fifty dollar Hopheads voucher. What a great prize! Yeah, well, we said the demons would uh, would step in, and they uh, they clearly have because Michael's gone AWOL. Um, so um, we're just waiting for, for Michael to come back on screen, and uh, we can get the quiz going. So as always, something happens. Um, just bear with us, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. So, Is there any news from Tonch in the background? Has uh, has Michael appeared? We're not sure. So we've got Vlad Babich from Williamstown. He's a committee member at the club down there. So. He's, he's ready to go. He's waiting in the green room, ready to get on screen. Michael will be with us any moment. And there's Vlad on screen. How are you doing, Vlad? Are you feeling confident tonight? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how I'd feel as well if I was one of the participants or the contestants, should I say. Was, yeah, I think you, you and Michael are, are um, quite brave having to go first. I guess you don't get a choice, but um, everyone will be watching for the subsequent weeks to see how it all goes watching you guys. So, um, yeah, I guess no pressure. No, nah, none whatsoever. <laughs> is, there any, is, there any, is there any topics you're not looking forward to, Vlad? Uh, anything to do with Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> any still... questions that are Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. And who do you actually follow? Uh, Man City. Huh. Let's have a chat about that while we wait. <laughs> That'll take us up 20 minutes. <laughs> it might be a quick chat given what's happened today, you feel. Yeah, what happened last night? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a great morning, but there's always next year. Absolutely. Will he still be there next year? Yeah, uh, 
I don't know. It's questionable. I think yeah, I think the type of football they played this morning, I think that's long gone. I spoke about it earlier. I think it's just a bit too slow. Moving going forward, they were just way too slow. Yeah. Given given the given the result last night, and given the fact that the Barcelona coach will probably leave, any do you think there's any chance of him going back to Barcelona? Well, it's possible. It's possible. I think it'll be at City one more year. I think they'll give it one more year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I tend to agree with Vlad. Uh, it's interesting to see who Barca will go for as their next manager, actually. Um, I haven't had a look at the field of contenders, but maybe they'll take a little bit of time to decide, perhaps, this time. Yeah. Anything from uh, from Tonchi in the background? Sorry about this, Vlad. Tonchi is here. <laughs> Tonchi. I've, made, I've made an appearance, yes. Um, I don't know what's happened with Michael. I think he's had a, t- a, a touch of the nerves. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> maybe he's uh, gone to the toilet. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, he, he can't be, yeah, we, we can't reach him for, for whatever reason. So, look, um, oh, look oh, um, if, if, no, if no other reason, if nothing else, um, we might have to get someone to, uh, to, to maybe Corey Smith or someone else at Sebastopol. They might be able to give us a buzz or something like that. And uh, maybe we can somehow... Drop me off a second. I'll see if I can get hold of him. Yeah, see if you can get Michael Bersier back. But, um, yeah, at the moment, unfortunately, he's back. Is he? Uh, no, not as yet. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. I, I, it's, I'm going to take myself off screen. Does, does Michael start at minus one point for this? Is this? Yeah. Is there a penalty for this? <laughs> no, let me tell you. Or is this part of the mind games? Yeah, you to pass the ball out there all the time. <laughs> you need to get the bog ball, mate, have you? There is nothing tactical about this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Uh, what there has been is new, uh, a lot of cursing going on in the background. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, the internet dropped out. So, yeah, welcome to my world, mate. I get that. Oh. I get that every week, and there's nothing more uh, uh, disappointing than having the internet and frustrating than having the internet drop out. So, well, now, 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 Michael, do you think this will upset your rhythm in the early rounds of this quiz today? Uh, look, I'm rattled. That's for sure. <laughs> That was that reply to the second to the second round straight away. <laughs> straight out, so. Are you uh, are you actually down at the club rooms or? No, no, I'm in uh, in my kitchen at the moment. You're in the kitchen, are you okay? Where's yeah. Cole? Is he there? How many other players you got in the background with you? Me, none. No, yeah. no. It's we're very. taking our restrictions very seriously up here. So very good. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm here. Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> all right, let's get on with the quiz, shall we? We so, shall. As we said, Gold. Um, There'll be 10 questions um, per team. Multiple choice will be four questions per, per – sorry, four answers per question. Uh, 10 seconds to answer the question. Uh, your first answer is the final question. Um, and there's no Google. No. Right. Okay. Oh. All right. So let's get – so we start off with the, uh, with the coin toss, Steve. Yeah, I believe we have the coin toss. Do you want me to do the honours or would you like to – You can do the honours. So, I've got a I've got a fifty cent coin. Uh, real hard cold cash currency these days is quite quite rare, isn't it? I had to uh, go into a museum to find this one. Okay. okay, now by my reckoning, the away team is Williamstown. So Vlad, I'll let you call heads or tails. Okay, Vlad. We'll go tails, please. And tails it is. So if you want to go, so, would you like to go first or second, Vlad? I'll go second, please. You can go second. So it will be Sebastopol going to the spot first to kick us off for the first question. So Excellent. We'll be playing uh, questions number one. Okay. Yep. Start off then with question number one. Um, and while we're doing, Tonchi's getting ready in the background. Question number one. Are we ready, Tonch? Who it is. The NPL Victoria champions in 2019. Was it A, Bentley Greens? Was it B, Heidelberg United? Was it C, Oakley Cannons? Or was it D, Avondale? Uh, um, I reckon it was D. I reckon it was Avondale. Avondale, your final answer? Okay. The answer to that question actually was a Bentley Green. What is going on here? Can you hear us? Has Michael gone? Hello, Michael. Something's happened. I seem to have gone quiet again. Yeah, drop us back into the screens if you can, Tonch. Um, 
Can you hear us at all? Hi, Michael. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. Okay. So the answer to the question is uh, in that one, Michael was Bentley. I don't know what's happening here? Yeah, I, I dropped out as well. You dropped out as well. Did uh, you? So I think that graphic might have killed the audio between us, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perhaps what okay. We'll do, perhaps what we'll do is. We'll okay, read. so we've got an answer in anyway for that first one. So. Okay. Perhaps yeah. what we'll see tonight is just we'll, we'll read the questions out, and give their answers rather than going into the uh, into the screen in the background. So. Yeah, it might be the safest way. Yeah. So we'll just require everyone to pay their full attention, whether they're competing or they're listening at home. <laughs> okay. So the answer to the question was Ab uh, your your answer was Avondale. It was actually Bentley Green. Bentley uh, beat Avondale four three on penalties in the final. Heidelberg actually won the Premier League or the, the Premiership by ten points. The play uh, It was actually Avondale that won the. Uh, uh, sorry, Bentley Green that actually won the uh, won the Premier uh, the Championship. Question number two for Williamstown. Or number question number one. Sorry for Williamstown. Vlad. Yes. Who finished bottom of the NPL in two thousand and nineteen? and were relegated to NPL 2. Was it FC Berlin? Was it Kingston City? Was it Pasca Vale? Or was it Altona Magic? Vlad? No, you're going to have to come bring that off, Tonch. Okay. Vlad? Yeah, drop that again. Every time I've got yeah. the... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We'll so put, Craig, yeah, if you read the question out, just audio yeah. only. Yeah. yeah. And Don't we just won't put the put the uh, screen up. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what was the what was your answer? Was it FC Berlin? Was it Kingston City? Pasca Vale or Alton? Uh, Kingston. Kingston. Yeah. Kingston City was your answer. The actual answer was Pasca Vale. And Pasca Vale finished on twenty one points, having played twenty six games, winning six, drawing three and losing 17, scoring 33 goals. Kingston City finished two points above them, whilst Andy Thunder finished three points above them. So the answer was uh, was Pasca Vale, Brad. So nothing for you. Okay, so no one off the mark yet in the first round. So still all to play for for the second question each. So it's and dead level here in the first and as Michael, this, uh, round of 16 ties. Michael dropped off again, is he? Looks like me, doesn't it? Michael. Is Michael has Michael gone, Tonch? Hey, back. Michael's back. There he is. All right, let's get question two for Michael. Michael, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Okay, mate. You're very quiet in the background. So, um, um, question number two for you: Jamie McLaren joined Melbourne City from which Scottish club? where he was on loan from German club Darmstadt 98. Was it A, Hibs, B, Celtic, C, Hearts, or D, Dundee United? Uh, it was Hibs, A. Hibs, you're correct. One point. Hey. Well, he actually played 27 times, scoring nine goals in, those, uh, in, the, in the time he was there. Vlad, some catching up to do. <laughs> Too harsh. Ex soccer rule, Mark Water. Last club was A. Chelsea, B. Fulham, C. Leicester City, or D. Middlesbrough. I think it was A. Chelsea. A. Chelsea is the wrong answer. He's actually he actually did play for Chelsea. He also played for Middlesbrough. But his last club in 2015, 2016, was Leicester City. And he had six caps. So wrong answer there for yes. Kasper Schmeichel's understudy in the uh, championship winning team in the Premier League that year. So good finish for Schwartz. He was. It was. <laughs> Not that he hardly played, just in a few cup games. Question number three. Back into State League football for you, uh, Buzz. In 2014, State League One side South Springvale became the first Victorian team to qualify for the inaugural FFA Cup Round 32, having beat which team 3-0 in the Doherty Cup at Olympic Village? A, Hume City, B, Heidelberg United, C, Bentley Greens, or D, South Melbourne? What was the first one again? 
A, Hume City, B, yeah. Hartlepurg United, C, Bentley Greens, or D, South Melbourne? I'm going to go with B, Heidelberg United. Heidelberg United is the wrong answer. It was actually Hume City. And when you said, yep, I thought you were going to go for it. They actually, uh, they drew, they, they actually beat them 3-0 um, in the Doherty uh, final. They uh, really threw me on that one. I should have just trusted myself the first one. And uh, how did they get on in the round 32, Steve? Any idea? Uh, I think they got knocked out. They, they actually drew South Cardiff in the round of 32, winning on penalties after coming from behind twice. They then lost to Gold Coast away 1-0 in the next round. So, um, Whereabouts is South Cardiff in Australia? <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, somewhere. Somebody, will, some smart ass will come up with it in a minute. Maxi Sandwich will come up with it. He knows it. <laughs> Question number three for Vlad. It's just to get you back uh, on, on, on level playing field, Vlad. Fox Sports commentator Robbie Slater played for which French side between 1990 and 1994? Was it A, Lons, B, Marseille, C, Runs, D, Bordeaux? I'll go C. C. I can't pronounce these are wrong. wrong. So, yeah. Is that your answer? Or is your answer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're wrong. Unfortunately, that was uh, Lons. He scored eight goals in 121 appearances for Lons between 1990 and 1994. Steve, over to you. Okay. All right, guys. We're just going to have a quick intermission. And let's talk about what's happening, um, first of all, at Sebastopol, Michael. Um, how are things there at the moment? How many, how many teams is the club building each year at the moment? That sort of thing. Obviously, aside from all of the carnage that's going on, have you got a good component of men's and women's teams and juniors and so forth that you want to talk about? Yeah, look, we've got we've got a range of different clubs here. So obviously we've got our state league clubs that compete in Melbourne. Um, but in terms of juniors, we've got a full complement that compete up in the, in the Ballarat League. Uh, we don't have any women's teams at the moment. We did we did have a very successful women's team um, for, for a number of years, um, quite dominant in the local league. And they also, they had one uh, season in the... the State League, they started off in State League 4 and actually won promotion in their first year to State League 3, but unfortunately just um, didn't have the numbers to keep things going on from there. So, um, you know, the club's certainly open to, to looking at having women's teams again, but just at the moment we don't have them. But, yeah, we, we do have full complement in, in the local competition. Uh, we were intending to have an under-18 side playing in the Metropolitan Competition uh, this year as well, but obviously that didn't quite get off the ground. So it's something that we're working towards in the future. So, you know, things are looking good for us uh, in that in that sense. Uh, pretty happy, you know, very happy with our numbers. We've just got two brand new pitches um, up and running. So we're looking forward to getting onto those, but um, we'll, we'll give them another year to settle in. But um, hmm. yeah, so that, that's pretty exciting. I think it's an over a $1 million project to get those pitches up in this state of the art. So, um, you know, it'd be pretty... It's not always the easiest trip or, or the most enjoyable trip up to Ballarat, but at least we'll be able to give you a good service to play on. Yeah, it'll be nice when you get there, yeah. Um, and, and that sounds very good, Michael. And, and can I pose the same question to yourself, Vlad, about Williamstown? Yeah, look, the club um, currently has, I think we registered 31 teams this year. It was going to be our first year where we were going to have a um, senior women's team, but unfortunately due to COVID, obviously there's been no football. Um, the club is going well. It's going in the right direction. Um, we were meant to, the council was meant to begin our um, uh, upgrade of the facilities, but unfortunately, due to COVID, that is on hold also. So um, it's going to be a disruptive. Well, it won't be uh, have a season at all this year, but we'll have a uh, disruptive season next year again once the council sets in and starts a bit of the renovations down at the ground. But exciting times down at Wheatstown, so we're looking forward to 2021. And what's included in those planned renovations? Uh, it's a it's a complete overhaul. So there'll be a brand new uh, club rooms, dressing rooms, car park. Um, the whole JT Grey Reserve will be... Um, will be renovated, apart from parks. The, the grounds will stay as is, but it's just the club rooms and car park. Okay, well, good luck for when that happens. Um, now, Craig, will we move on to question four? We are, and we'll just uh, do a recap. You can see the scores there in the uh, in the top left-hand side. And after three questions, uh, 
it's uh, it's uh, yeah one nil to uh, Sebastopol. So uh, um, everybody that's uh, everybody that's uh, registered to come on over the next couple of weeks are all going to be sending me emails in the next five minutes saying we're not coming on. These questions are too hard. <laughs> to make it easier next time. <laughs> so, right, guys, question four. Uh, this is going to um, Michael. Uh, so this is a who am I? All right. So there's four uh, four possible answers. I captain my country consecutive World Cup finals and lost both. Who am I? A. Franz Beckenbauer. B. Diego Maradona. C. Johan Cruyff. Or D. Karl Heinz Rummenigge. Uh, I will go with C. Johan Cruyff. Johan Cruyff. Do you want to jump in, Vlad? Do you want to, any idea? What would you have said? Uh, I probably would have said Cruyff as well. You would have said Cruyff. Well, you would have both been wrong. It's <laughs> Karl Heinz Rummenigge. He captained West Germany in the 1982 final, which they lost to Italy. And in 90, 90, 1986, where they lost to Argentina. By the time they ne actually won the tournament, Rummenigge had retired, which was in 1990. Vlad, same question to you. Well, not the same question, but... Yeah, give us the same four. question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be better. I'll be better. I'll be better. <laughs> Who am I? I? I have scored hat-tricks at two different World Cups. Is it A, Thomas Muller? B, Ronaldo, as in the Brazilian Ronaldo? C, Paulo Rossi? Or D, Gabriel Batistuta? I have scored hat-tricks at two different World Cups. Can you read those names again? Sorry, Craig, that third one dropped out. Sorry. Thomas Muller? Yep. Brazilian Ronaldo? Paulo Rossi? Or Gabriel Batistuta? Uh, I'll go Batistuta. Batistuta. What would you have said, uh, Michael? Um, I would have gone with Ronaldo. You would have gone with Ronaldo. Vlad, you're on the board, mate. No. Uh, Gabriel Batistuta, it was in 1994 and 1998. 1-1. In interestingly, guys, both of the hat-tricks were, sc were scored on June the 21st, and both were scored against debutants Greece and Jamaica. The third goal was a penalty on both occasions. How oh, much is that? Hey, you're on the scoreboard, mate. Welcome to the game. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is where it might get a little bit uh, difficult because the next one is a picture quiz. So uh, what we'll do is we'll put the picture quiz up. We'll ask, uh, you'll have uh, a couple of seconds to have a look at it, Michael, and then we'll come back and ask you the, uh, what the answer is going to be. So, Tonchi, if you can put up the... Uh... Can you see that, Michael, in the corner there? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which North American club has this as its logo? Is it New York Red Bull, DC United, LA Galaxy, or Los Angeles Football Club? LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy. Is that right, Tonch? Drum roll. No, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Correct. Well done, Michael. Aim for you, Vlad. Question number five. So two one now. Two one. Yep. Which La Liga club has this as its logo? So when you're ready. It's coming. It's coming. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Lara. The suspense. It's palpable. There it is. So that's the logo. Sevilla, Atletico, Valencia, Osasuna. Okay, so take us back off, Tonch. So the, which club was that? Was it Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, Valencia, or Osasuna? I think it's Valencia. Valencia is spot on. It's 2-2 two, two at halfway. 2-2 two, two at halfway. So we'll have a little bit of a break. We'll put some uh, some adverts on. We'll have a timeout. We'll uh, give Tonch bit of time to uh, to sort the back end out and we'll join you back in a couple of minutes the best beer store, the best store in the west, store in the west. Two stores two stores at shop 2 number 13 at Delphi Boulevard Point Cook and 78 Pier Street Alterna 
Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, we've adjusted our menu and our business times. You can now get takeaway Friday and Saturday nights between 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can phone your order through on 70210555 Friday and Saturday nights between those times, or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au. But orders must be received by 5 p.m. on the day required. Check out our full menu and weekly specials on our website, georgiesonvista.com.au. Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from Georgie's on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise, in the heart of Caroline Springs. Turned into the sun or the moon, I'm not sure which one. Yep. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> can you hear us? Can you hear us? Flat? Yep, yep, all good. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're back all in. Right. So, Doing great so far, guys. One, what have we got? Two two each halfway. So coming into the second 45 minutes now with all to play for and dead level. Okay, so we go into question number six, and it's another who am I? Now, we've done it slightly different. So there's four possible uh, – there's four questions within one question. If you get it after the first question, you get five points. If you get it after the third, after the second, you get three if you get it after the two, you get two points, and the last one you give. And when you get to the last one, we'll give you four different options. Okay, is that yeah. clear? Okay. So it's a who am I for five points, Buzz? Yeah. I played in three different decades. Not sure. If you, if I guess, am I? I only have one guess. Nope. Okay. Three. I played in three different decades. Now you're going to give me, have to give me more than that. Okay, so for three points, I am a one-club man. <laughs> no. 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 I knew this would get him. My father, this is for two points, my father and I both won Champions League with the same club. Jeez, I'm stumped here. <laughs> I played for three different decades. I'm a one-club man. My father and I both won the Champions League with the same club. A couple of seconds. No? No. Okay, we'll move on for one point. Corey Smith in the background says gigs. He shows how much he knows about football. I think he's heckling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Played alongside six Ballon d'Or winners at every level. Was it Francesco Totti, Brazilian Ronaldo, Paolo Maldini, Franco Baresi? Paolo Maldini. Yeah. When you, one point, did you hear the name? You think, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy when you hear all the multiple choices. <laughs> You got one point for that one. Am I in that one, Steve, for me? Yep. All right. So, yep. Um, Vikings on to uh, three points. Williamstown on two with that question in hand. Okay. Same for you, Vlad. Five points for the first one. Okay. Who am I? I played on four different continents. That's four different continents. He wasn't in continent. He was. He had played on four different continents. We don't know that for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no, I'll need another question. Another question. Okay, for three points, I won the National League in six different countries. I played on four different continents, and I won the National League in six different countries. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> I won for three points. Uh, sorry, for two points. I won the FIFA World Player of the Year. 
I played four different continents. I won the National League in six different countries. And I won the FIFA World Player of the Year. I've got no idea. I don't know. Zidane? I've got no idea. Zidane, is that your answer? Yep. That's yep. Your answer for that one. No, it's not right. So we'll go on to, to your one point question. I played 74 times for Brazil, scoring 35 goals. Was it A, Ronaldinho, B, Rivaldo, C, Ronaldo, or D, Robinho? I'll go B, Rivaldo. Rivaldo is spot on. It's the right answer. Great. He played in South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. And the six teams that he played, for, uh, six countries he played in Brazil, Spain, Angola, Italy, Uzbekistan, and <laughs> he won the FIFA World Player of the Year in 1999. How many FIFA World Players of the Year have applied their trade in Angola at some point? Or Uzbekistan. <laughs> I guess Angola because they speak Portuguese, probably. I don't know. Yeah, well, now only you know that, Steve. So <laughs> Portuguese you. colony. All right, 3-3 three, three at the moment between three. the State League three rivals. So All right. It's got a nice ring to it. Question number seven. This is for Buzz. Croatia's Davor, Davor Suke played for which Spanish club between 1991 and 1996? Scoring 76 goals in 153 appearances. Was it A, Sevilla, B, Barcelona, C, Atletico Madrid, or D, Real Betis? I'll go with Sevilla. Sevilla is the spot on and the correct answer. He moved. Did you know where he went after, after Sevilla? Did he end up at Real Madrid? No, he actually moved to Arsenal. And then he went to West Ham before hanging up the boots in 2003 after playing 448 goals and scoring 270, 207 times. But he did play for Real Madrid before. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, question Rick. number seven. Vlad, another Croatian question. Post-2000, which Croatian coach has the best win ratio? A, Igor Stimac, B, Slavan Bilic, C, Niko Kovac, or D, Zlatko Kranka? You can I'm not sure. Um, the, the Croatian club, I'm actually getting the, 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 the word in right as well. So uh, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'm going to lock in C. Niko Kovac? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was uh, Slivan Balic, Slivan Bilic, uh, Tonchi's uh, second best mate. He played <laughs> 55 games, won 42 wins. He had 42 wins, 15 draws, eight losses, and a percentage ratio of 64.62%, even though he failed to qualify for the 2010 World Cup. Is that a true story or an urban myth that Tonchi and Slavan Bilic are on first name terms? I have no idea. <laughs> so he may well be. There's only four people living in the country, isn't there? <laughs> And in flames when I not get down the north along. That's it. Look out. That is trouble. Yeah. Uh, what question are we on? We're on question number eight, aren't we? And how's the scores looking? Still 4 3 to Sebastopol, yep. 4 3, yep. 4 3 midway through the second half. So there's still time for Vlad to pull back to level and hit the front. Okay. So we've got another Who Am I um, picture quiz for you, uh, Buzz. Yep. Uh, Tonch, if you can just get that up very quickly, just pop it up on screen and then pop the guys back on. That'll be great. So in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a photo there. Uh, who is it in that photo? Is it Thomas Muller, Tony Cruz, Mesel Uzo, or Marco Roas? I can't hear you guys. It's Mesel Uzo. Yep. That's um, yeah. When it, when it cuts off, mate, it uh, unfortunately takes the uh, the microphone off. So can you hear us okay? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what was your answer? Mesut Ozil. Mesut Ozil is the correct answer. Whoa, good get. Okay, so that takes... Uh, so Michael goes on to five. Five. Vlad, you've got uh, three... Vlad questions. needs one here. Three questions left. We've got another, who am I? We'll just pop it up on screen and then come straight back out. So there's your question. Jump strike out for me. Tunch. Okay. So in that question there, did you see it, Vlad? No, might no, have to put I didn't. it back Sorry. on for a second. And just shove one second just again. Pop it back. Yep. Just pop it back on in the small okay. small screen. Yep. 
Just leave that for yep. a moment. All right. Okay. Draw back, back out. So, who was that in the photo? Was it A, David Beckham? B, Gerard Piquet? C, Stephen Gerard? Or D, Harry Kewell? I'm going to go C. Stephen Gerard, you said no Liverpool questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not. Actually, do you want to pop it back up for me, Tonch? Put it's it on the just in the, in the, the corner. I'm being a terrorist. Mm -hmm. Can't see. No. Oh, it's Harry Who's your second guess? Harry Kill. Yeah, do you want to have another one? Where are you all, mate? Uh, PK, is it? It is Gerard PK. Yeah. It's a Spanish kit there. Yeah, it is. It's a World Cup, uh, World Cup uh, picture there. Where he's, uh, it actually does look like. It looks like all four of them. So, um, and four <laughs> <laughs> the I would have got it. You didn't get that one right. So we needed like a Shakira track playing in the background for a bit of a Correct. call. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to question nine. We got two questions each, guys, and the scores as we stand are Sebastopol Vikings five, Williamstown Soccer Club three. Question number nine for Buzz. Back into Australian football. At the end of 2019, NPL to Western sites, uh, Western, four clubs were relegated to the NPL three. They were Ballarat City, Melbourne Victory, Whittlesea United, and which other team was it? Yeah. You're not having an extra point, but it's Bendigo City, Moreland City, Geelong Soccer Club, or Moreland Zebras? Geelong Soccer Club. Yeah, right. It was Geelong Soccer Club. They finished on 36 points, four behind Brunswick City. That takes you to uh, to six. Um, and a Michael's had uh, straight A's in the second half, four from yeah, four yeah. after half time. Got half a Ballarat phoning in with the answer. What was in those oranges, mate? <laughs> I've got a few <laughs> friends in that team. So. Yeah, exactly. Phone a friend. Happening up there in Ballarat, mate. Number nine for Vlad. Let's see if we can uh, claw some back, mate. At the end of 19, 2019 season, State League One, four clubs were promoted to the new NPL3 competition. Two from the West and two from the East. They were Preston, North Sunshine, Nana Wadding City, and which other team from the East? Was it A, George Cross, B, Doveton, C, Malvern City, or D, Banyul City? C, Malvern City. Um, it wasn't, mate. It was uh, B, Doveton City. Uh, they were promoted to uh, NPL, NPL 3. Um, and I believe that's where Scott McDonald and all his family uh, started playing. And I think his family are still involved heavily down at uh, Doveton. Actually, when I was at Point Cook, we actually played them in the, in the FFA Cup down there. They're a very, very good side. So we go on to question 10. Our last round, there's not going to be any... Um, any uh, more questions after this one, guys? So uh, we, what's the score there? 6-3 to Sebastopol. So question 10. It's another picture quiz. So we'll put the picture up. We'll cut you off for a couple of seconds. Put a full picture up, Tonch, if we can. Let them have a quick look, and then we'll come back into the, uh, into the screens. Yeah, sorry, guys. There's a satellite delay down in Lara. <laughs> Are we there, Tonch? Here okay. we go. Okay, Tonch, let's take it away. Okay, so in July, Al Algeria won the uh, first Africa Cup of Nations in 29 years with a win over which nation in the final? Was it A, Egypt, B, Senegal, C, Morocco, or D, Nigeria? I think it was A. You went for Egypt with uh, Mo Salah? Yeah. No, it wasn't, mate. It was B, Senegal. There you go. 
So you finish off with a big, uh, a big cross yeah. on the last question, Vlad. Well, Let's go. Over to you for your last question, mate, and uh, we'll put this one up for you to have a look at. Okay, Tonch, let's take it away. Do you want to have another look, Vlad? No, nah, no, nah. all good. Okay, who scored Chelsea's winning goal against Manchester City? To, you should know this, to clinch their Premier League title for 20, Liverpool after 30 years. Was it A, William? Was it B, Christian Pulisic? Was it C, Mason Mount? Or D, Cesar Aspilicueta? D. D? As, yeah, D, D. D. That's the Coletta or whatever. Coletta, yeah? Yeah. Definitely wasn't B, you said. No, it was definitely D, you said, yeah? D, D for dog. Definitely not B. No, nah, but it was B, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, Christian Pulis that scored the winner for uh, yeah. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was B, B. <laughs> I tried, mate. I did try. <laughs> So, so we come to the end of the quiz um, and a, uh, a resounding victory in the end for uh, Sebastopol Vikings, and we'll be seeing uh, we'll be seeing Michael in uh, in the quarterfinals. Congratulations, Michael! Six three winner. Thank you very much. Uh, well done, Michael. We had a, a good run there in that second half. The uh, as uh, as, as uh, Steve said, he must have had some uh, some energy drinks down here at halftime, mate, and uh, you got the job done, mate. So. Listen, guys, thanks very much. Um, and a big hand for Vlad, too, for being our other first competitor, too. Thanks, so, well done, mate. Yeah, thanks, thanks for guys. I uh, hope, hope you enjoyed it. A uh, bit of fun, as I said. It's, it's all about keeping, uh, trying to keep everybody motivated and keep the clubs. The numbers are very, very good. So, watching in tonight. So, hopefully, uh, we'll get more of this. But uh, a big thanks for coming on, Vlad. And a big well done to Michael. And we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you. Michael, you win a $50 voucher, which we'll get off to you. I'll, send that, off. I'll send that off to you in an email this evening, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. Congratulations, well done, Michael. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, well Vlad. done, Vlad, and well done, Michael. Thanks very much. Well done, Michael. There we go. So that that's it. That's that's completed our first round, and first match in the round of sixteen tonight for yeah. the six three winner. The, uh, Hopheads football yeah. IQ quiz is underway, and. How yeah. good was that, guys? Punchy. It was fantastic. <laughs> we had some fantastic numbers there. We had some uh, some good curly questions there. C Craig was the quiz master, so he did a bloody good job, a fantastic job. Um, uh, hats off to you, Craig. It was not not an easy thing, and um, but bloody bloody technology. We 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 had all these fantastic little um, you know graphics like that. Look at that, fantastic. Spent all afternoon doing it, but uh, unfortunately. Didn't come out. So, uh, nonetheless, we have got our first winner, though. How good is that? We have. Uh, it was very good, actually. Really enjoyed that. It was a bit of fun. Um, some really uh, curveball questions in there. They weren't easy, but maybe we might have to make them. Actually, 6-3, um, that's, that's a respectable score, I think. Um, you wouldn't want anybody getting 10, and you wouldn't want anybody getting mm. one or two questions. So, I think the good good mixture of, of uh, European and, and Australian questions there. So, uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Steve, what, what was your take? Yeah, well, I think it means you've obviously done pretty well with the with your quiz with the six three scoreline. I think that's good. You want to see people getting somewhere around that middle of the road mark. Um, I think halfway through the quiz, when it was only two two at half time, and there were some calls for some questions to be more like what national what national team did Mark Viduka play for? Um, unfortunately, we won't be going down that road on Thursday night. It'll be my turn to write the questions. So yeah. hopefully, um, yeah, we can find questions of a, a similar relative difficulty and keep them even for both competitors. For that big one on on uh, Thursday. So well yeah. done to you, Craig, for putting those questions together, and a very well done, Tonchi, for doing all the stressful behind the scenes stuff all day today and during that quiz tonight. Yeah, Hopefully, fantastic. you can um, put your feet up and uh, have a breather tonight and have a big uh, sigh of relief that we've got through the first round, uh, the first quiz night, and we've got uh, another one to look forward to on Thursday. Yeah, we'll send an email off to the uh, to the admin guys of the of the site and see if there's anything we can do because it's a shame that we can't put the graphics yeah, up. Exactly and, right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, next season we're going to have to upgrade and, and go to a uh, a, a more 
quality, quality product. <laughs> yeah, but in order to do that, folks, we're going to need your support. We do need your support. Become a member of the Football Outwear Show. We're, you can see the, all the brilliant stuff we're doing between the Geelong Region Soccer Show, the Football Outwear Show, the Football Fan Zone, the but the A League pre game re- preview, the A League post game pr- uh, review. Man, this is like a full time job. Help us out. <laughs> www.patreon.com forward slash football outwear show. Um, we do need your support. Um, and on, on Monday, tomorrow night, um, Steve, you'll be joining me um, for possibly, possibly, I'm going to say it here, possibly our last Geelong Region Soccer Show um, um, episode for the year. And boy, have we got a fantastic guest tomorrow, uh, James Muir, who is an old Geelong boy and has gone on to bigger and better things. And he is head of Trainer, T-R-E-I-N-E-R, which is like an online um, service portal for... Um, um, is it? Hello? Yep, it's Craig. Is it Craig's? Yeah, it's Craig's. So as soon as I mute Craig, everything's fine. (laughs) Um, Yeah, he's going to be joining us tomorrow, so that'll be absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait for that. And then uh, next Thursday, Craig, um, the band is back together. All three of us will be back for match day two. And um, let's bring up that that, um, graphic. Match day two, we'll see uh, Hoppers Crossing taking on North Geelong. So... uh, that should be absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait for that. Yep. No, that will uh, that will be another uh, a good tussle. And uh, yeah, really glad how that went tonight. Uh, first first one we've got it got it out of the way. Uh, a few little demons in there, but nothing uh, nothing to uh, to worry about. Uh, internet was good in Point Cookistan, which was uh, it was. Which- which was another big, uh, <laughs> another big uh, uh, plus. So um, yeah, look forward to uh, to Wednesday's night's uh, Hoppers Crossing versus North Geelong. Wonder whether Kevin Smart will be off the your uh, by then. Well, hopefully, I hope, will. So. I hope so. It'd be good to see Smarty on the air. Fingers crossed. On that, mm. on that note, good night, everyone. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Steve. Good Thank night. you to Vlad Babbage from Williamstown Soccer Club. Michael Bersia from Sebastopol Vikings. It was um, absolute pleasure. And thank you to everyone that tuned in tonight. We had a really, really, really good turnout for match day one, Sebastopol Vikings versus Williamstown. Thank you very much to our sponsors, Hopheads, uh, for sponsoring the Hophead Football IQ Quiz. Good night until match day two. Stay safe. Good night.